um, and we actually had some really crappy exploit code even a, even as as old as a year and a half ago. The, the, the um, click jacking concept. Yeah, um, not related specifically to why we pulled the speech, but just other things. Um, and uh, we, we played with it, it worked. Uh, we actually came out with a couple of different exploits based off of it. Uh, and then about Black Hat, uh, Jaron and I started talking about some other stuff. So, so what is this click jacking stuff? It, it'll, on one hand, it's a really simple exploit, and the other hand, it can get really dangerous real fast. So click jacking, well, let's, let's start earlier. Let's say you visit an attacker-controlled website or some page with code on it that it belongs to a bad guy. Let's uh, MySpace profiles, a la Sammy Worm. So we know there's really, really bad things that we can done with JavaScript. We can do, you know, phishing with superbait scans, steal passwords, steal cookies, internet scanning, steal history, all the great things that the browser guys have not done a whole lot about. But let's say we can get past all that, and let's say we can. When the user clicks on a link, clicks on an image, or clicks on anything on the website that we can control what they click on, because with DHTML, we can slide whatever we want under the mouse invisibly. So how bad can get that get? So that's, in essence, click jacking. So that, like Robert said a year and a half ago, our first implementation was just click fraud, you know, moving around banners underneath the ads to force people to click on things they wouldn't have otherwise done. So. Up comes the Black Hat stuff, and uh, you know we're researching. I think every every once in a while we talk for 15 minutes, and uh, a vendor calls and goes, "What are you doing?" <laughs> so we develop this click jacking stuff. We develop our exploits. We're getting the slides together, and uh, Robert, being the polite guy that he is, shares uh, with, with a few people. One of which is Adobe. So we had a brief well, and so. Uh, what Jeremiah was working on and what I was working on was uh, separate but also very intertwined. So we basically put his code inside my code and it magically made it a whole lot worse. Um, and it started snowballing and so the first thing we found was an Adobe issue um, and the specifics that we can't talk about at least yet. And uh, they know about it, they've agreed, yes, that's an issue. And actually they thought we were probably not telling them the truth or telling them the whole story at first, kind of funny. Uh, and we actually just thought we were finding something that was naturally there. We didn't realize we were finding anything weird. Um, and then later on, um, we started finding more and more issues within the browsers, um, and it affected all the different browsers with the exception of things like links. Uh, so you can all go back to links if you feel like it. Um, so, so we're of the opinion that clickjacking as a problem is within the domain of the browsers. Our exploit code, the one that we really, really wanted to show here, uh, was using an Adobe product just to demonstrate its power. So when we showed it to them, they were, well, really worried and said, well, we know with whether or not the browser guys want to fix this stuff, we would like to protect our users as best we can. Uh, we weren't given much time, you didn't tell us, and you know, we, they, they thought we were going to zero day them. We didn't even think it was their problem, but they took ownership of it, which is a really weird reversal of fortunes where the security researchers are telling a vendor, no, 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 it's not your issue, and the vendor's going, yeah, yeah, it's really bad, please stop. <laughs> so it's kind of different for us, right? So uh, we consented to give them more time to fixing the issue, and that was that. Yeah, so we've also, th this, and like Jer said, this has nothing at all to do with Adobe. It's really a browser issue, except that Adobe's affected by it. Um, the browser companies did not ask us not to talk about it, uh, so we will talk about it. Uh, there's certain small aspects that are probably not that wor not worth talking about, but um, there are a lot of other companies, a lot of other websites, a lot of other products that are going to be equally as bad affected uh, as Adobe is. They're just one of them. They felt like they wanted some time. We're giving them the time. Um, we have talked with other PCER teams. Uh, at least one other one said, yeah, definitely this is going to affect us. Um, so if you're on the web, you use a browser, whether you turn JavaScript on or off, it will affect you. It has nothing to do with JavaScript, despite what some people have said. Yes? Uh, Not so far. Wait, let's see. We've we, the IE team knows, Mozilla team knows. Yeah, Cisco uh, knows. It's a long-standing issue. How they choose to fix it and when? Who knows? Yeah, they. It's. It's not, it w it's not a, like a buffer overflow, if that's what you're asking. There's really nothing, there's be an update, there's no patch for it. There would have to be a fundamental browser. You know, let's say click, 
you won't, you don't know right now like the exploit code, so there's no point of reference. But let's say clickjacking is really bad. How do we prevent a user from clicking on something that they didn't want to? So that's it's not really something you'll be able to patch really easily again. So that's the point where they're at. The probably the closest analogy to anything that's currently out there that everyone understands is cross-site request forgery. How do you stop cross-site request forgery in the browser? You can stop it on the client. You can stop it on the web server by saying, well, I'm looking for referring URLs, and it's just a horrible way to do it. But you know, you see my point. Similar in that regard. So which is again why you'd want to use links. Right. So uh, Adobe needs a little more, more time. We'll do the best we can to get the rest of the data out there as soon as seemingly possible because it's, it's not their bug, it's, it'll be everybody else's. And so the other thing is I wanted to make very clear now in front of everybody, this is not the worst vulnerability to ever hit the web. This is not Dan Kaminsky style bug. This isn't like the worst thing ever. There's a lot of buffer overflows in the browsers that have, give you more access or better access or whatever. Uh, the only difference between this and all that other stuff, the, like those those uh, those kind of bugs that require like quick rollout, you know, change this so it's doing a instead of a gets, you know, it's it's uh, checking the buffer or whatever. You can't fix this with a single line of code. There is no quick way to fix this problem. It is fundamental to the way the browsers work. So. So, so that's the story. We'd be happy to answer any questions and be as forthcoming as we can. But we have to apologize for pulling the the proof of concept code. That's. I cannot tell you how And much we do have generic uh, exploit code uh, that will work pretty much anywhere. Um, but uh, we'll release that later. Yes? I didn't hear the question. Um, depends on the application that you're trying to attack. Let, let's, try it let's try it this way. Let, let's say. I want to make you click on something. What are all those things could they possibly be? I can make you click on anything. Once you're on my page, I can make you click on any button, any image, any link, any URL, anything. So let your imagination go from there. Very and, similar and, and, to cross that request for it. And you won't see it. It's invisible. You won't see it. You think you're clicking on a link, but you're clicking on whatever the bad guy happens to choose. So it will break cross site request forgery. It will break everything. Or cross-site request forgery solutions, I should say. If yeah. There's oh, there's a mic in the back. For those uh, that want if to you'd like to use that. Come on, guys. I know you guys have more questions. Yeah. The link. The link is bait. Yeah, the, the, the link that you think you're clicking on isn't the thing you're clicking on. Although we can allow you to click on that as well at the same time, sort of. Uh, there, it's Without giving a lot away the exploit code itself, it would be difficult to explain all the nuances of why I can sort of do certain things. But um, let's put it this way. A normal user would have no idea what was going on. Uh, people in this audience probably wouldn't notice either. Um, except for their, it would react a little differently than they might initially expect. If they went and viewed the source and started poking around, of course they'd understand what happened. But you just, just, just think of a button on any website that's really, really important, and I can make you click on it. Right. Okay. So, is there any cross-site nature to this particular problem? Is this like? Doesn't have to be. If you're on the bad guy's site. Doesn't have to be. What happens? Uh, it has to the, the attack. You have to be visiting the attacker's website or a page with code that they control. So if it's if if you went to visit a site that was cross-site uh, scripted or something, uh, or you're visiting a bad guy's website or.